For this calculus lesson, we will be talking about limits, and this is the numerical approach. That means we will be using a calculator, do some approximations, and help us out to figure out what the limit should be. Let's take a look at the first one, perhaps the most famous one in your calculus one class. The limit as x approaching 0 of sin x over x. Let's go ahead plugging 0 into this x and that x and see what happens. We have sine of 0 over 0. And we know sine of 0 is just 0, and we still have the 0 on the bottom. So 0 divided by 0, the answer is just equal to 1, right? Because anything divided by itself is just 1, like 22 divided by 22 is 1, 15 divided by 15 is 1. So this should be 1, and then we are done, right? But wait, didn't we talk about it? If we have a 0 on the bottom, the answer is just undefined. So, which one is it? Mm, well, let me tell you guys this first. Let me erase this and also that. I would like to tell you, keep in mind, we have 0 over 0, and this is we are doing a limit question. All right? Yes, if you have a 0 on the bottom, if you are just doing regular computation, no calculus involved, no limit involved, then the answer is just undefined. But here, we are talking about limits. You cannot draw any conclusion yet. The answer is not necessarily 1. And you don't say it's undefined. Here, what we are going to say is, this is actually just what we call an indeterminate limit form. And let me emphasize this again. This is for limits. 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. And this is for limits. What that means is that we just have to do more work in order to figure out what the answer should be. And now, let's make some observations. No graphs, just some values and see what happens. So, let's make two rows. The first one is for x, and then the second one here is for the function sin x over x. And let's have five numbers. So, here, one. Let's do like this. 1, 2, 3, four, 5. And the reason for this 5 is because here I can put 0 right in the middle and then we're, we can approach 0 from the right hand side and also the right hand and also the left hand side. Now, this 0 that I put in the middle means we are entering exactly 0 into the function. But when we enter exact 0 into the function, it's just a regular computation. We do get the 0 over 0 earlier, and this right here, we will really get undefined because we have a 0 on the bottom. Now, let's avoid exact 0. Let's approach it from the right-hand side, meaning pick a number just slightly bigger than 0. Let's pick 0 0.01. But can we get even closer to 0? Sure thing, let's pick 0 0.001. Cool. And of course, you can do more, 0 0.0001, but I will leave that to you. Now, let's go to the other direction, mm, a number that's a little bit less than 0. Let's put negative 0 0.01, and then let's go even closer, negative 0 0.001. Right here, just go ahead and use your calculator, enter 0 0.01 into the x, so we get sine of 0 0.01 over 0 0.01 and make sure your calculator is in the radiant mode. Work this out, we will get 0 0.99998. Cool. Now, just go ahead and repeat the same process for this number. We will get 0 point with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 nice, and then 8. And then let's go to the other side. If we enter negative 0 0.01, we get 0 0.1234498. In fact, this and that are the same because sine x over x is an even function. And then for the last box, we get 0 0.1234568. So now, let's take a look at the box. As we can see, when we approach 0 for the x, Right from the right hand side, what happens to the y? 
the y is approaching what? Well, we have 0 0.999 already. The y is approaching 1. Good. And then if we go from the other direction, hey, the y value is also approaching 1. So right here, what can we say? We can conclude that the limit, let me just write that down, the limit as x approaching 0 of our function sin x over x. This right here is just equal to 1. So in fact, this is actually the answer as well. And wait a minute, did I tell you guys 0 over 0 it was not equal to 1 and right now I'm giving you 1? So did I just waste your time? No, don't worry, okay? This is just the most famous example for limit in the first few weeks of calculus. Let's take a look at another example and then see if you can spot something different. Let's do this one right here. We have limit as x approaching 1 ln x over x squared minus 1. Do the same thing first. Put, zero, uh, put 1 into the x and x. So we get ln 1 over 1 squared minus 1. ln 1 is 0. 1 squared minus 1 is 0. OK. So just like earlier, I'm just going to put on 1 and move on. No, let me tell you. No, it's wrong. The answer is not 1. Trust me. And by the way, the reason that I'm putting down arrow right here is because this is limit, so it's about approaching. So that's why I draw arrows instead of equal signs. Anyway, though, let's go ahead and make our table. So first row will be for x, and then here is the function ln x over x squared minus 1. And then let's have five values again, because that way we can put the 1 right in the middle. But this means x is exactly equal to 1, and that will give us 0 over 0. And because of the 0 on the bottom, we actually get undefined, because this is just a regular computation. Now let's approach 1 from the right-hand side. So just a number that's a little bit bigger than 1. So let's say 1.01. .01. And then let's go even closer, so we have 1.001. .001. Now let's come from the left-hand side. A number that's slightly less than 1, let's pick 0 0.99, and let's get even closer, 0 0.999. And go ahead, just pause the video, use a calculator, enter all the values, and then fill in the table. Done? Okay, so right here, I have 0 0.495, approximately speaking, and then for here, we get 0 0.495. 4995. Go to the other direction. Here we have 0 0.505 and here we have 0 0.5005. So as we can see from the table, as x is approaching 1 from the right hand side, the y is approaching 0 0.5. And when we approach 1 from the left hand side, the y is approaching 0 0.5. Even though it was about 0 0.5, but it's like keep going down, keep going down, and it's approaching 0 0.5. Therefore, we can actually draw our conclusion that the limit as x approaching 1 of our function is what? 0 0.5. And we are all adults now, so let's use 1 half. So in fact, this is also the correct answer for this limit as well. How do we do it without a calculator? Don't worry, I will show you guys that later on. So, this is one half. Therefore, you see that earlier, 0 over 0, this limit in determinant form, it didn't give us 1. So, keep this in mind. We just have to do more work when we see 0 over 0. Now, I will show you guys one more, and this is also a really famous limit, and I will also talk about this in determinant form. The limit as x approaching infinity of 1, 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x power. For this one, let's see. I will plug in infinity to this x and our x. It looks like we have 1 plus 1 over infinity and then raised to the x power, uh, which is also infinity. And I'm drawing arrow because I want to show you guys that this is about approaching. So now let's see. Here we have 1 plus, what's 1 over infinity? Just think about it, 
1 divided by a huge number, you are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, so it's just approaching 0, so that will be 0. Then, we still have that infinity. 1 plus 0 is for sure 1, so we know that. And then we have this to the infinity's power. Now what? 1 to the infinity's power. Can we say the answer is 1? In, in fact, you should guess it. No. When we are doing limits, this is counterintuitive, right? This is about limit. This is a limit in determinant form. No, cannot say that. This is also an in the determinant form. We have a total of seven indeterminate forms, and here we have zero over zero, and also one to the infinity's power. So there are five more later on. So how are we going to figure this out? And let's just go ahead, make our table. X and also one plus one over X raised to the X power. And then let's put several numbers. This time though, we have X is approaching infinity meaning x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I will say, let's start with x being 100. And then I want to make it bigger and bigger. So let me put 1,000, and then 10,000, and so on, so on, so on. But let me stop right here for a little bit. I'm just going to enter 100 into all the x's, and in that case, I will get 2.7048. Just enter 100 into all the x's, see on your calculator, you get this. And when you put 1000, we get 2.7169. Continue, we get 2.71814. And now if we want to make the x value even bigger, let's say 100,000, we are not going to get like 3 or 4 or like 12 or something. We actually still get about 2.718 something. And this is actually about 2.718 to 6. So as you can see, this number is certainly not equal to 1. But do you recognize what this number is about? Here's the fact for you guys. In fact, the limit as x approaching infinity of 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x power, which is about like this. This is the number e. This is one way to define the number e, which is about 2.71828, and so on, so on, so on. So, as you can see, 1 to the infinity's power, when we are dealing with limit, yeah, this is an indeterminate form. Before we go, I really want to emphasize this, because this is the most confusing one, I would say. Why didn't this give us 1? Because this 1, it was not exactly equal to 1. Why? Because this 0, it was actually not exactly equal to 0 either. Because the 0 came from 1 divided by infinity. And keep in mind, all these are just the limit form. So, what exactly do I mean though? Have a look. Let me put this for example right here. When x is equal to 100, if we plug into the x, we get 1 plus 1 over 100, and then raise to the 100th power. So if we focus on this part, 1 divided by 100, it's going to give us a small number. It's just 0 0.01. And imagine if we put 10,000 into x, that part is going to get even smaller. And let me just work it out for you guys real quick. This is equal because it's a legitimate computation. We get 1 plus 0 0.01 and then raised to the 100th power. This 0 0.01 is exactly what I'm talking about right here, not 0. It was not exactly 0. It's a tiny bit bigger than 0. So when you put a tiny bit bigger than 0 and you add 1 to it, this right here, it's not exactly 1. In this case, it's a little bit bigger than 1. So if you look at this, this is 1.01, .01, which is a little bit bigger than 1, and you raise that to the 100th power, in fact, you get a number bigger than 1. And per our discussion, 
this was approximately 2.7048. So coming back to here, if you want to be technical, you could have put down 0 plus, and this is not 1, it's technical than 1 plus. A number slightly bigger than 0, slightly bigger than 1. But unfortunately, nobody does that when we are talking about limit. So it caused a lot of misconceptions, but hopefully everything is clear right here. Leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And here it is. If you would like to take a screenshot. All right, that's it.